Hello everyone, it's History Behind the Warrior, and of course, welcome back to yet another God of War video. In today's History of episode, I wanted to hone in and focus on a very interesting addition to Ragnarok's narrative, a character that I myself didn't quite expect to see make the cut, and that is the traitorous Vanya Goddess, and Odin's last living will, the final Valkyrie Queen, Gnar. Now, Gnar's addition to Ragnarok is a welcomed one, because whilst we know that the Valkyries would be returning, we didn't know in what capacity they would do so. Gnar helps add a new but familiar idea to the current Legion of Valkyries, by taking a Vanya Goddess and granting her the wings of a Valkyrie. But what exactly led to this? As we do know, she had extremely close and personal ties to that of Freya. And what of Vanaheim? As we know that this realm had been decimated by Odin. So what exactly happened here? Well today, we're going to be exploring that relationship. What exactly happened between Freya and Gnar? And when did she rise to the mantle of Valkyrie Queen? But, as always everyone, before we do begin, I would super appreciate it if we could first get this video to about 1000 likes. It's a small and minor thing, but honestly, it really does go a long way here. Because behind the scenes, YouTube has been violently bricking the channel's reach, as their new policy for gaming content is really rubbing a lot of us the wrong way. So it would mean a lot to me if you could all just simply give this video a thumbs up. But anyway, without any further ado, let's get right into things, shall we? Now, as clearly pointed out, Gnar is not actually of Aesir descent, but instead derives from the world of Anaheim, with she herself being the Vanya goddess of wind and fullness. Whilst her origins aren't too explicitly explored in game, we do know from her Nordic counterpart that Gnar was an extremely important individual to Freya of Vanaheim, or as known in these texts as Frigg. Gnar effectively served the Vanya goddess and acted as her personal assistant, handmaiden, and loyal follower, carrying out her will at any request or desire she wanted on a whim. She was effectively the right hand of Freya. Now, not much is known or actually explored what happened with Gnar during the Aesir and Vanir War, only that in its conclusion, where Freya would be married to Odin, she would accompany the goddess to the realm of Asgard, still fulfilling her loyal role as Freya's personal handmaiden. But it's here where Gnar's character starts to really take shape. Whilst an outsider to the Aesir, Gnar was utterly mesmerized by the spectacle of Asgard itself, engrossed by its warrior culture and its way of life, something so incredibly different to what the world of Vanaheim had presented to her. Plus, being beside Freya naturally granted her many privileges that others were not so fortunate to see, such as the in and outer workings of Asgard's royal bloodline and a friend in Odin, someone she very quickly grew loyal to just as much as Freya, as she did become his Valkyrie queen at the time. But this relationship would very quickly deteriorate following the birth of Balder, as Odin's infatuation with Ragnarok naturally overshadowed any other interest, including his own family. Thus, his siege against the Nine Realms would begin, and the giants would be lost to time. Naturally, this rattled Freya, as her relationship with Odin had more or less dissolved this point, having completely gone against his will. Knowing what would become of her, Freya did plan to escape his grasp, 
but this was something Gnar wanted her to reconsider. You see, Gnar had been fully seduced by the honeyed words and kindness of Odin, wearing it all under the disguise of forging a better tomorrow. So her time in Asgard had blinded her to any wrongdoing the Allfather had previously done, even to her own home. At least, what was her home? So despite her pleas to Freya, the Vanir goddess would eventually leave Asgard and Gnar in tow. This was something that Gnar would never forgive her for, as she felt abandoned despite her many loyal years of service. Thus, she would become bitter and angry, seeing what Freya did as the ultimate betrayal. Left in Asgard, Gnar would become a devoted zealot of Odin's will. The blind faith she once had for Freya had now passed over to Odin, who naturally welcomed her into his broken family. But no good deed goes unpunished, as Odin, of course, had his own ulterior motives that would flourish in time. So nothing would become of Gnar for many, many decades, but that would all change once Fimble Winter set in. With the death of Baldur and the release of the incarcerated Valkyries, Odin knew that the end days were finally upon them, so Ragnarok would begin despite his attempts to change it. But to prepare for the oncoming storm, he would look for a new Valkyrie queen, and what better one could he find than one in Gnar? You see, Odin knew just how strong a Vanir goddess hybrid was, having seen what it did to the like of Freya. So, by preying on Gnar's faith and somewhat abandonment from Freya, what better way of getting back at her than claiming Freya's former title and becoming a better Valkyrie queen than she ever was? Now, Gnar makes her first in-game appearance during the Atreus section of the game, where the young Jotnar has been invited to Asgard by the Allfather. Here, we first see Gnar and Nia immediately come to understand what exactly does she do for Odin. Gnar is the leading general of the Inhudia, being responsible for leading them into battle, and of course, training them alongside Odin's other Valkyries, Hrist and Mist. After Odin is able to cleanse the Inhudia, she makes her next appearance during the giant battle of Ragnarok itself. Here, she can be seen fighting for forces of the Nine Realms to keep out all that threaten her home. She is seen tearing off the wings of a shield maiden, before then turning her sights on the giant wolf Fenrir, seeing the devastation he and his kin are Causing. So, Gnar decides to chase both him and his rider, Angraboda, to halt their attack. But her aggression proves to be her undoing, as once she follows them through a torn rift, she loses track of the two, and in turn, is cast out from the Battle of Ragnarok, meaning that she's unable to return as Odin falls. Heartbroken, Gnar chooses to follow Odin's will, even in death commanding the remaining in Hodia that are left after Asgard's destruction, believing that this is her way of honouring his memory. But for her to finish what he had started, Gnar decides to reside in Musfulheim, binding her time and knowing very well that eventually she would be confronted by the Spartan Kratos and her former friend, Freya. As the two seek out to tie up loose ends, Gnar would immediately spring into action, attacking the duo and unleashing a ferocity of attacks, utilising the moves of every Valkyrie before her and intertwining it with Sonic, Cedra and Bifrost magic. Consumed by her bloodlust, vengeance and rage, she does her best to engulf Odin's killers. But even with her vast skill and talents, the combined might of Freya and Kratos proved to be too much for the Valkyrie Queen. And so she is defeated, as Freya does try to reach out to her friend once more, seeking both forgiveness and redemption for someone she loved. 
But Gnar at this point is far beyond reasoning. Both unable to forgive Freya for what she had done, or forget how she had abandoned her, Gnar makes it her final request that this is where it ends. And Freya, wanting to respect her friend's last wish, finishes Gnar, and so does Dai, the very last will of Odin. Now, Gnar is a very interesting addition to the Nordic series of games. Whilst previously, she was never really mentioned, she does feel like a key and important part of Freya's cursed time in Asgard. And, in a way, how Freya could have turned out if she was fully seduced by Odin's desire for conquest. And that's what I feel Gnar represents to the God of War universe, because in many ways, she's very similar to Freya. Both had ties to Odin, and both became his Valkyrie Queen. The only big difference is here is that Freya saw him for what he was, whereas Gnar saw Odin as someone that could transform her into something better. I'm also a really big fan of the legacy of the Valkyrie Queen. As Freya is a Vanya goddess that adopted the title out of love for her people. Sigrun, a mortal, adopted the title to protect her sister and honor her predecessor, but Gnar took on the role out of sheer bitterness and a way to destroy its legacy, a way to erase the past. But for now everyone, this has been it for the history of Gnar, and I hope you have enjoyed this one. I'm a very big fan of her inclusion in this game, as she is actually my favourite boss. I do like how she's utilised, and in a way, is a reflection of Freya's rage that we do see at the start of Ragnarok. I'm just glad that we did get to see that Valkyrie Queen Vanya Goddess fight, even if it was in a different way than what we had anticipated. So with that said everyone, what are your thoughts on Gnar? Did you like her addition to Ragnarok? And how did you handle that boss fight? Please do comments down below. But for now everyone, that has been it for me. So as always everyone, stay strong, stay well, and keep on fighting, as Ragnarok is here, and it's 2023. Happy New Year everyone, I'll see you all soon.